despair in this situation? Um, I introduce myself. Uh, I'm Elisa Camellini, coming from Philcom, a, local tra a national trade union. And this video was the uh, start of uh, all the uh, topic. I work for Philcom for uh, tender policies and I uh, follow our sectors, our main sectors, um, so um, tenders for services, uh, uh, so um, catering, uh, um, monitoring, everything that works, uh, everything that concerns outsourcing for public and private sectors. When we talk about supply chains in tenders, it is something very complex because tenders are kind of a supply chain inside a supply chain, and if we can talk about it that way. Uh, because we have so many difficulties in finding information, um, and I refer to all the interesting information that Piscitelli, Mr. Piscitelli was uh, giving us. Often we have to um, understand ourselves how structures are created of all providers of tenders. So if we uh, consider public procurement, uh, the, the condition is uh, a little bit different because public tenders are um, different, they need um, an official release in the press, and uh, at a European level, if we think about uh, uh, huge um, public entities and even inside countries, I think about uh, the European Union when they call for tenders uh, for managing their buildings, uh, etc. We are well aware of how they uh, manage uh, these uh, procedures and how outsourcing is done um, for the services. Something that is more complex and different is how to find information and gather information to understand what's inside tenders in multinationals because they are private entities and so they um, it's, it's difficult to gather information on this uh, topic. Uh, what we can grasp uh, up until now uh, from uh, all the information that we can uh, gather is that even uh, big groups, even for multinationals, don't acquire only one provider uh, in all those countries where they are present. If we consider uh, a group like Enel, that is an Italian group and is present in other parts of the world, not only in Europe, um, despite the fact that they have a transparency transparency policy to manage tenders and, and providers, well, actually, uh, Despite this dimension, they do not uh, um, give a structure to their tenders uh, uh, focusing only on one provider for their outsource activity. Most of the time, they have to deal with one market or one country uh, whether they're in one place or another, and so they can easily find the provider or the subcontractor in that area. This is a condition that, as a trade union, as Philcom, we uh, try to manage, and uh, we have tried. We have started perceiving this uh, complexity. Uh, we have to um, manage our relations with uh, subcontractors. Uh, we uh, do this research because uh, we are representing workers of those companies that are um, that are given the tender. Uh, so. Th 
these companies are helping uh, to understand how the uh, research of a provider for a tender was done. So for this reason, I think that tenders are a supply chain inside a supply chain, because before understanding how tenders are developing in a supply chain for multinationals or for a multi-sectorial supply chain, we have to understand how the multinational was positioned in outsourcing uh, its services and for developing tenders. So this is uh, where the uh, relation with the uh, client becomes a bit more of an issue. Um, because of the impoverishment of uh, work, as uh, Stefania was uh, uh, saying, uh, because of this fragmentation also, we are seeing that uh, more and more quality, uh, the quality is uh, uh, decreasing. If I consider, if you consider the banking sector, we have witnessed uh, um, a structural impoverishment, and I think uh, my colleague will give you more details after. This impoverishment concerns not only employees in the banking system, but also for the services. Uh, services have been. Uh, drastically reduced. If we consider cleaning services uh, um, from the mid-90s, uh, uh, where being a bank, a bank was uh, something that was good for your appearances, um, all these services uh, of, the, of the bank to manage all all the uh, all the system, uh, a high target was required because you needed to be uh, in a welcoming atmosphere. So the cleaning service, for instance, was important. Now, nowadays, the uh, banks now have to cope with the um, digitalization, so many subsidiaries have been uh, closed and even uh, some uh, individual agencies were closed. The services they're, they're giving are not uh, individual services but uh, uh, a financial service. So, for banks, we have seen um, cuts and services have been reduced up to 80% for cleaning services. Uh, uh, I will give you some uh, uh, concrete figures. Uh, in uh, an agency of 300 uh, square meters uh, where we had uh, 80 employees, uh, workers uh, were working for two to three hours a day, every day. Today, they're only working for 40 to 45 minutes for three times a week. And I won't tell you what are the conditions for employees of the bank because they all have their cleaning tools and they clean themselves because you can easily understand that in 45 minutes you cannot clean everything. So this is just an example to let you understand how the uh, system of tenders uh, of, um, for, for services is uh, rapidly changing linked to all the services for multinationals. The other condition that we uh, see now is that when you have these uh, poor um, tenders, uh, big m companies uh, with uh, structured uh, s services are not uh, calling for tenders, and so the the fact that is that the the price that is given for a tender does not cover all the costs. So uh, all the important. Con 
companies that we know in Europe like Sodexo or others that are working in this sector are not participating in tenders because uh, there's no margin for managing all the costs and so they cannot cover all the all the costs and all the the work that is done uh, normally, we have 70 to 75 percent of costs for the work that is done that should be then transferred to manage the uh, image of the company itself. So, for these reasons, banks are not. Um, just dealing with one provider, but they're um, addressing to the um, internal market, to SMEs, uh, to participate in this tender. And these are the only companies that are taking part in the tender, and uh, the, they last for nine to ten months for, to manage the tenders, and then they disappear. The first condition that we give is that salaries are no longer paid and uh, when the, these companies are replaced uh, then you have to pay for all the uh, salaries and uh, we have to work for the uh, corporate social responsibility for the company itself. It's, it is not something that should be given for a fact. Um, if we consider uh, private tenders, there's a law in the, in Italy that obliges the um, the the main company that is calling for a tender to uh, replace the the subcontractor f for uh, economic costs or insurance costs. Um, so they are responsible for those uh, costs. The last three, four uh, wages and the uh, last wage that is due for the workers um, for 1,500 1, euros should be paid for all these costs that are not paid. For this reason, we have to, um, to go to the court because uh, it's very difficult that the companies uh, uh, do not want to pay for that, although they are obliged by law, uh, in or bef before going to court. So the problem is that in such a system, which is not only a problem in Italy, I've seen it uh, elsewhere in Europe, uh, in other countries, in other trade unions uh, like Philcoms that are working in these uh, sectors for uh, that are um, analyzing tenders, we have almost the same situation. For instance, we have uh, the same situation in Spain uh, that have a similar management of these problems uh, in France, for instance, and the European Union, they have regulated this uh, topic. Uh, so private uh, entities cannot really have a say in this, even uh, in uh, entities that are linked to the state in, L in NL, uh, part of the shareholders is represented by the state itself. Even in this case, for this company, we have some difficulties to react. Uh, for the, uh, the posts uh, in Italy, we still have this problem up with all these standards. Uh, post is one of the worst um, companies that can call for tenders and uh, despite the fact that this uh, company is uh, mostly um, is mostly represented in shares by the state itself so uh, this gives you an idea of uh, what uh, Transformers is trying to do, trying to understand this continuous evolution inside multinationals. This is uh, uh, something 
that can help us understand also the outsourcing systems that we, multinationals are using to, to try and uh, create uh, these networks of uh, tenders and subcontractors. We try to understand from the inside because from the outside everything is perfect, they have every certificate, their balance sheet is perfect, but then in the, in the end, uh, um, but then there's a huge difference from what they say and what they actually do. And I will conclude on this uh, on this last um, mention. From an international point of view, they they have a huge sensitivity. Uh, we are trying now to we, we are seeing more and more that we have uh, uh, we are stronger, and so we are trying to represent the weaker. When we create interactions and initiatives uh, together with uh, uh, trade union representatives uh, inside uh, uh, companies, and we are working on that with CGIL and other trade unions, this is something that is troubling for companies, and uh, we are also seeing more and more that when uh, they are behaviors are not decent, uh, that I consider not decent because if you don't pay an invoice for a, a company for 180 days uh, with 25 employees so that they are not able to, to pay their employees, what we are trying to do is to um, um, work with the uh, ethics uh, committee. We are working a lot uh, with uh, the press as well because we understood that uh, what is important for these companies is their image uh, more than uh, uh, being condemned and being sentenced by a court. Because the, the, they need their system of certificates, so if they don't have those certificates, uh, then it's uh, complicated to manage all they have to do. Uh, all those tools uh, that we can uh, uh, give ourselves, like Stefani was saying, is uh, that we have to uh, understand for multinationals in particular, uh, to understand these aspects, uh, the importance of ethics and and uh, ethical sustainability and corporate social responsibility. Thank you.